Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another session of podcast. I wish and I'm sure you will enjoy listening to the progress. What really is a diet? How does a diet work on us? Okay, what we consider as a diet without naming names, but there are so many, um, so many fairly published and popular diets, you know, that uh, promise to give you a certain result after a certain time. Does all this work? Does it really, is our body uh, really looking for that kind of a diet or we are trying to stuff ourselves with something, assuming that we are going to get some certain results. So, okay, without making it too complicated, I'll go over to Sir. So, so what is a diet? Is it the sum total of all the intake as we take as food? Can we call that as a diet? What really would you mm-hmm. define as a diet for a human being? Uh, the greatest Tamil science program started with the uh, first video of uh, Art of Cooking. Art of Cooking, yes. So, there are many things were mentioned in that program. Mm-mm. So, now we come to the word diet. Right. What, is, what do you mean by diet? The word diet, you know, the food intake. Mm-mm. So, if you go to uh, psychology, mm. uh, they would have explained the primary needs and the secondary needs. Right. So, in the primary needs, they are physiological needs. Mm. First thing starts with hunger. Thirst, sex, maintenance of body temperature, feeling of safety and security, and maternal. This is final is maternal. Okay, maternal. Maternal is only for applicable for the women folk. Right. You bear a child for nine months, and mm. uh, when you give delivery to a child, uh, you have that motherly mm. that instinct. Feel an instinct. Yeah. Yeah. These are all instinctive in nature. Mm. Hunger, thirst, sex. Feeling of safety and security, maintenance of body temperature and maintenance. Mm. The instinct, the word instinct will be explained as uh, an innate biological force which predisposes the organism to do certain act. Okay. It's not under your control. Not under your control. No. Mm. Now, the first thing is hunger, physiological need. Mm. When the hunger comes, you have no choice other than to satisfy it. True. Whether you are a beggar or a millionaire or a billionaire or a person with all kinds of divine quality, you may claim. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have to eat. You have to eat. Yeah. No choice. So, what do we eat? What do we eat is food. Mm. The food is given to us by nature. Yeah. Right? Mm. So, the body by itself, the human body by itself, it's made out of atoms. Mm. Finally, 92% of your body is made out of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Mm. Mm. So, that's a carbohydrate is nothing other than carbon, hydrogen and oxygen with a one-to-one ratio. Mm. We have given a program on that. So, this carbohydrate wants that carbohydrate mm. because carbohydrate are the energy source. Mm. So, now here, the diet what we talk about in general, is food that we need to satisfy our hunger. Mm. We stop here. True. Mm. What food? What your parents have given you? Mm. (laughs) Over. There is no more complication in this. (laughs) Yeah. From the day you are born till the age of 15, 16, that is what you, your, your, your food is made at home by your parents right. and that food is taught by their parents. Mm. That's how we eat and come. That's what is diet. There is, there is nothing big about it. You can ask your next question, whatever you want. <laughs> so, actually my next question is sort of answered but I will still uh, ask. Uh, what is the best diet for a person? No, if, if you see um, uh, a person who is, you know, having, say you, you take uh, the, the population lives in Siberia, mm. lives in remote areas of uh, uh, Siberia, mm. they are not in mainstream with the urbanization and all that stuff. And the diet, what they eat, mm. if you give it to people in Chennai, it's toxic for us. Toxic for us, true. Heavy fat. And what, mm. what food that we eat? In South India, if you give it to a Norwegian, mm. I don't think so you can digest. Mm. So, 
what people eat in Japan has to be given to the Argentinians, it may not suit them. It may not suit them. So, according to the geographical location, mm. according to your, uh, you know, uh, the tradition in which you come mm. uh, and your parental molding, mm. the, the food is designed to that territory by those people, mm. which has been followed over thousands of years. Mm. So that is what is diet, that is what is food. You stick to that. Because a microbial load uh, of a fruit called kiwi in New Zealand mm. may not suit an African. True, true. Mm. Yeah. So can we uh, define diet as the traditional food intake that one is used to based on their geographic no, environment. Scientific, no, no, no. Scientifically, if you see, we need carbohydrates, mm. we need protein, we need fat, we need other vital minerals, yeah. which you may call it as vitamins mm. and maybe trace minerals. Mm. This should be our food. Mm. Right? Yeah, right. Because you need glucose mm. for every cell, energy source to drive the cells and function the cell. You need protein. Mm. You need fat. You have nine number of different types of diet. If you go to the net and see mm. what the people over a span of time designed. But how best that it will suit a person is a big, big question mark. Now, for example, I can tell you, uh, paleo diet. Mm. What is paleo diet? Paleotic uh, diet is, uh, you know, um, uh, it's been, you know, they, 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 if you go and read that, what people, what hum humanity has eaten 10,000 years ago. Mm. Mm. So, they were eating mutton, birds, poultry. Mm. Uh, Certain grains. Um, no grains there. No grains? No grains there. Mm. No grain food comes into that. Eggs, mm. ah, uh, okay. nuts, Protein. seeds, mm. something mm. like that. So, because you your assumption, you assume that 10,000 years ago, uh, the people were uh, not used to agriculture. Mm. So, they were eating what is available. Uh -huh. How do you Hunting. know? Uh -huh. What evidence you have that they were not doing agriculture? Mm. And what evidence you have, this is what they would have eaten, you assume. Right. So, that paleo diet, now 10,000 years, we have crossed close to 400 generations, mm -hmm. there is a huge amount of transformation has happened. True. Mm -hmm. And you want to, since we have eaten that kind of a food, assuming we would have eaten that kind of food 10,000 years ago, how can you eat it now? Even today, your environment has changed completely. Then the side effect of this paleo diet, you know what? Mm -hmm. Diarrhea, mm -hmm. nausea, functional disorders of intestines, because of load the onto the kidney. Because of the microbial load? Because of high protein. High protein. Oh. High fat. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, um, it, it, may, it may result in high risk factor for cardio, mm. high risk factor for cancer, depression, drowsiness, dullness, mm. laziness, because carb is not there. Mm. So how can you eat that diet? You were you were you were born in a Maharashtian family in Pune. Right. You have used to some set of food till the age of 10, 12. Mm. Whatever cooked at home is eaten. Right. Maybe once in a month or twice in a month you may go to a restaurant. Mm. But you are not going to you have not gone to a Mexican restaurant and eat, eat oh, in Mexican food. <laughs> never. <laughs> right. Or a Greek restaurant to eat a Greek food. Absolutely. There was no such restaurants no. there when we yeah. were small. Yeah. So we go to a restaurant where we get the same food what we make at home. Yeah. Our rotis and mm. chapatis and puris and you know sabjis and what not. But the point here is suddenly you want why do you want to go to a assuming that 10,000 years ago some people would have eaten only this so let us eat this. Mm. Then you have high protein diet. Mm. What is high protein diet? I don't understand at all. Again meat, salmon, fish, tuna, mm. uh, poultry, eggs, nuts, Avocados. seeds, no, no, no <laughs> carbohydrates, yeah. little bit of veggies little bit of uh, fruits. Aray, what is this? Okay, I am asking you a simple question, you know. You go for a, a, a wedding. Mm. 
a person who's uh, the, a, a rich person who's getting his daughter married and she is your friend and you go for a wedding in the wedding it's so beautifully done elaborately done and the food is also elaborate they put you a big plant and leaf mm. they give you 50 items there mm. have you ever eaten like this in your house never <laughs> Have we ever cooked fifty-two items at the same time and placed it on top of a plate or a leaf and eaten? No. So we don't have the appetite for it. Right. He wants to, you know, give you a very beautiful lunch or a dinner where he keeps fifty, sixty items. Mm. We can't eat. Mm. How much you will eat? We don't have the appetite for all those things. We have never had such food. Sure. So. How? What do I call that diet as? Rich diet, elaborate diet, decorative diet. You can bring in lot of language here. Mm. But what we need is when you first reduce yourself from carbohydrate by going into uh, 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 a protein-rich diet. Mm. You have fat-rich diet. Mm. What they are saying is give the body in a huge amount Apple of fat. fat. Mm. which can be converted into carbs or glucose or whatever and then reduce the carbohydrate to keep the blood the glucose under control mm. so the body burns the glucose existing within the body that is the logic logic at least then okay. what happens your what about your system your liver your stomach your pancreas which has to assist the digestion what about the you know the uh, intestines Okay, we'll come to this side. Mm. I want you to more understand. If you are if you are talking about low fat diet, mm. then again we have a problem. What problem? We need uh, vitamin A, B, C, D, E, and K. Mm. Now B series and C vitamin C are water soluble. Mm -hmm. Your blood plasma is water based. Mm. so they very easily get water soluble inside the body mm. and get, get, gets absorbed by the plasma which is water based mm. and then it can be transported to all parts of the body b and c mm. good now a d e and k are fat soluble fat soluble it is not water soluble mm. and lipids can you know your protein diet you know what for protein comes in comes to lipid and lipid can transport it to the rest of the body mm. if you are going to have low fat diet or zero fat diet What about your A, D, E, and K? Mm. You're gone there. So what happened in 1980s, early 80s? Even though they knew this fact, they thought they will go in for a low-fat diet to control the cholesterol. Mm. That whatever they call it as high-density lipoprotein mm. and low-density lipoprotein. It's this should be of this number. This should be of less than this number, and all that kind of thing. 20, 25 years they practiced low-fat diet. Mm. they found that is because to come, you know if you give low fat diet and the cholesterol is under under these numbers or whatever mm. and then you reduce the rate of heart attacks and people the fatal and all that stuff what happened in the end the low fat diet practices uh, of the huge population the rate of heart attack and cardiovascular problems were more than what it was before ah. knowing the fact that we need good amount of fat mm. now you 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 work a methodology mm. and you say 0.4 grams per pound of your body weight should be your protein intake per day mm. again they come into numbers mm -hmm. that means you need a minimum of 56 grams of protein per day in your food mm. are how can you work on those numbers here i told you The, the 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 population who lives in alaska hmm. may may need more protein will need more protein because more they were used to more protein uh, maybe 200 grams of protein every day they must be eating because the guys who eat uh, in siberia a lot of fish uh, as their main course hmm. they eat a lot of protein right their body is used to it how can you bring it under a number and say this is this is going to be the international standard or a, a global standard, standard. Oh. or a universal standard all kinds of language we have now <laughs> global worldwide international universal i don't know i don't understand that <laughs> at all and they say 0.8 uh, grams of fat 
per kg of your body or per pound of your body some numbers they would have given mm -hmm. again they'll calculate it, this many number of grams fat should be there in your we may uh, i i live in a remote village uh, uh, as a tribal in a western guard mm. i'm not used to much of grain food i eat jack fruits mm. i drink goat milk i eat deer meat i eat plant and hardly once or twice a week i cook something mm. and eat so how can you bring me and uh, i am living a healthy life right because i move around 30 40 kilometers a day mm. that's a huge exercise for that's me that's a huge exercise yeah. and i'm not walking in the flat terrain mm. i'm in a hilly area i climb up i go to the valleys i climb down mm. by the time i go for two chakra in the morning and evening i'll be climbing down and climbing up nearly about i'll be covering something like 30 40 kilometers or 50 60 kilometers in a day mm. collection of many things i go hunt mm. i go search of honey i climb trees i am tirelessly moving all the time in the world between the sunrise to the sunset which people in the normal terrain we guys live in the urban area we don't do that we don't do that so how can you calculate these numbers to that man mm. who has given him that diet because he was living there generations after generations after generation so he is accessible to certain foods which is identified by his ancestors his parents his grandparents mm -hmm. whatever and he is being used to that kind of food from the day he was born and he is continuing that and going and if you are going to give him a burger and pizza he is going to definitely go into a loose motion <laughs> his stomach is not going to agree to that cheese does not expect it yeah. mm. then processed food industry uh -huh. that's another big headache for us mm -hmm. you are not supposed to, according to the modern science food and nutrition dietary division you are not supposed to take frozen meat on a daily basis Yeah. you can they have given this mm. leads to lot of problems even if it's in a cold storage storage so and kept at minus cold storage is what is frozen mm. what is refrigerator refrigerator the concept came in 1750 mm. some kind of a refrigerator compressor based refrigerator came in 1834 mm. in 1854 industrial light refrigerations came in 1913 1913 residential model of refrigeration compressor based had come mm. from there onwards we deteriorated with that word called diet <laughs> anything stored in the fridge you can go mm. you can you can read that in the net right anything stored in your refrigeration they say more than 3 to 4 days mm. it's good like that and that because when you take a tomato a tomato a plant is grown the mm. flower has come and the small bit of a tomato has come and it's grown 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 big and ripened into red color mm. has it what temperature it has seen from the day it was born to the ripen of tomato normal environmental and you are keeping it in the fridge mm. to hold it for number of days mm. it loses its nutrients oh, okay. that's measured by the modern science mm. anything that we store in the fridge will mm. start losing its nutrient as the time goes so there we are getting stuck we are getting a lot of our processed food or cold storage food right if you go to dubai mm. Saudi Arabia and all these uh, West Asian countries, where your temperature between June to September will be very high, very high, forty-five to fifty-five degrees. Forty-five, fifty degrees. degrees yeah. So all your vegetables, which comes from other parts of the world, fruits, all are frozen. in cold storage. Right. Otherwise, it can't stand the heat. It can't stand the heat. Yeah. So your nutrient of that vegetable is gone. Mm. That is what you are eating. Mm. True. So we can't do anything about it. Mm. and today what has happened because of our modern science transportation system mm. of air cargo and other things every food grown everywhere is available everywhere everywhere you have the tasmanian apple in all parts of the world mm -mm. you have the washington apple in all parts of the world okay mm. you have the cherries from philip island in all parts of the world 
you have the yellow plums from europe in all parts of the world likewise every food commodity grown everywhere in the world mm. is within 24 hours in every part of the world mm -mm. probably if we start using this another 10 generations of eating all kinds of food from all parts of the world we will become familiar to all those kinds of food yeah. it may take time it will take time yeah not at the moment at least at the moment i don't know <laughs> what is exactly happening mm. because once there's a problem of disease sets in mm. which we are not able to identify why this is coming mm. so we don't know and diet is something which is should be a normal diet balanced with carbohydrate protein and fat, fat. and other trace minerals and vitamins mm. which if you take the uh, to my uh, observation to my understanding i was born brought up in chennai in tamil nadu and we are used to our set of uh, traditional food whatever what we eat we are all rice based eaters we are not roti based eaters like right? wheat based mm. so what we eat is some kind of a idli or a dosa or pongal upma something like that in the morning we'll have one rice one gravy one rasam rasam is a must here mm. which helps your digestion one or two vegetables sometimes meat little bit mm. whatever sometimes seafoods that's what our lunch not all the days we eat non veg one twice a week or something night we'll have again rice or whatever or tiffin item something this is what we eat three meal a day Mm -mm. and this is what is the best food for me suddenly if you going to push me into eating only meat mm. that's not going to suit you right no no way. so this one um, important question when uh, diets are mostly um, associated with weight loss and a lot of people follow a certain a certain diet you know prescribed diets for reducing weight they probably see results in that as well but um what are the downsides of these diets especially done for maybe you know maximum a few months or a year to lose a certain amount of weight so um, what I, i think if you could just elaborate on the mm -hmm. downsides of this because this is most popular <laughs> and yeah. uh, now if uh, it's a multi million dollar I'm, industry yeah in 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 my experience whatever mm -hmm. little that i have seen 50 years ago when you go to schools when we were in schools mm -hmm. maybe there are around uh, 1500 children were studying in my school mm -hmm. hardly uh, 10 of them were on the higher side Obvious. in size mm. you are talking about weight now yeah, yeah. <laughs> today if 1500 students are studying probably the other 1000 students way. are studying so 200 students are stout yeah, and big yeah true, true. okay mm. so now what i am asking is what is this weight all about what is this weight loss all about we have a point here what is the point here is that we don't have any physical exertion whatsoever mm -hmm. we sit and eat <laughs> all the time in the world and we are in screens we are in social media we are in mobile we are in ipad we are in video game we are in laptop mm. or whatever we we are in television you have 300 channels in a television mm. so we keep talking 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 because you you sit in your bathroom on your commode and you can speak to somebody in america who is driving <laughs> yeah. it was not there those days <laughs> so you are put on weight what do you mean by weight loss so what do you do suddenly somebody comes with a brilliant idea eat only tomatoes for 3 days mm. then you eat only plantain for 4 days then drink only milk for 2 days mm. you know then you eat sprouts only sprouts for 4 days mm. what is all this your gall bladder regulation is going to go mm -hmm. and you're going to land up with headache ah yeah there's excess bile also yeah. released so right? yeah you are finished mm. you only eat tomato what is it mm -hmm. you have never eaten like that in your lifetime sure. and they say that if you follow this diet pattern they'll give you a chart mm. some crazy stuff they ask you to follow that they'll say every week you reduce 3 to 4 kilos you do reduce but i'm sure as you're saying there are so many side effects of the you're depriving of your your body of what forget the side effects when you deprive the body when you finish this 45 days exercise or 3 months exercise or 2 months exercise when you come back to your regular food in this exercise of number of weeks you may have reduced around 12 kilos mm. when you come back to normal food 
within a month's time, say you have taken eight weeks to reduce 12 kilos, for mm-hmm. example. Mm-hmm. When you come back to our, your original normal dietary stuff, within four weeks, you go to 15 kilos more. Mm-hmm. Body will behave so violent. Uh, it, it's going to crave uh, yeah. for what it's In our deprived. salt uh, program, I have said, no. Right. if you go to zero salt diet, mm. absolutely zero salt diet, mm. in three months, you will minimum lose 20 kilos. Okay. When you come back to salt after three months, you know, after 48 days, say, suppose you, you're, you're somebody is 52 years mm. and he goes for a zero salt diet. After crossing 45 days, uh, 48 days or 50 days, you know what will happen? Mm. He will feel that he was walking when he was when he was an 18 years old. Mm. How effortlessly he was walking. People will not be able to come with you. People will say, go slow, go slow. Mm-mm. You will be walking, I will be running with you. Mm. In such speed you move. After 90 days when you come back to salt, within a month's time you put 25 kilos. Mm. I have experienced all this and I am telling, I have practiced, I have experienced, I am telling you this. So, this weight loss category Mm. is one thing. First of all, make sure you don't put on weight. (laughs) Exactly. And then, you know, you don't work hard to, you know, reduce the weight. Reduce the weight, Uh, yeah. Reduce the weight, there is only one thing is, you know, first of all, the problem in the present world in the last 25 years, all of us around the world are doing excessive eating. Mm, of the wrong things. Excessive eating because you are all the time stuck at home. Mm. You keep on want to entertain your tongue. Yeah. The best way to kill your time mm. is to eat. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You keep drinking juice, you keep drinking snacks, you know, eating snacks, you know, it mm. keeps going. So you put on weight. Mm. So if you are going to carry various other, uh, you know, brought in uh, adopt ideas, and then start following this dietary pattern, that dietary pattern, that fellow's formula, that fellow's formula. Yes, it may work. For but then, period. what is the price you are going to pay? True. Which you may not know at the end of the, the, the dietary uh, formula that you have completed. Correct. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was really enlightening. Thank you very much for spending your quality time. Thank you very much for your attention. I wish you enjoyed this session. See you later.